So today in the shop, we worked on a carbon fiber umbrella pole repair. It started out to be a relatively simple repair because I thought I could buy the part. Uh, you guess what? You can't buy the part. So the part I needed to do required some cutting, some bending, some uh, grinding on the grinder, some sanding, and mainly prepping it up for the carbon fiber work. Now I showed on this video how I use carbon fiber and JB Weld together to do this kind of a repair. The repair when it's done is absolutely stronger than the original pole. So I would think it's worth the time we're spending. Also, we had some good words from Joe. He's gonna to try to help us tomorrow. We had our delivery of stone. That's all in the bank. And mainly the last part of it, working with carbon fiber and JB Weld together. There's some good information, some good tips. I hope you enjoyed the video. Well, it was a few days ago, we had a windstorm go through here. And unfortunately, it did a lot of damage that we're just starting to uncover now. And combined with the fact that we want to put stones on the side of the house and the, the delivery guy is going to come. They don't tell you when they're going to be here. They're going to be here today. So I've got to wait around the house all day for the stone to be delivered. <laughs> it's such a long story and it's not, it's not even fun to listen to. But anyway, I had a nice thing happen. Joe Padula, who owns the Ducati, has a pickup truck and a wheelbarrow and he's volunteered to come over tomorrow to help so today i try to get everything in place so that tomorrow we have a very uneventful job i guess is the right word but anyway it's nice of him to volunteer thank you joe but this kind of work i know there's no there's no substitute for just closing your eyes and getting it done now the advantage is karen will be very happy because she has these really nice planters she wants to put there and the advantage for me is when i come back from a ride I won't have to mow that grass, that 300 square feet of grass. So this will be in the next couple of days. How it's going to evolve, how it's going to play out, I have no idea. It's, it's just, as I always say, I hate Groundhog Days. This will not be the next two days. And we have had some gaps in the video here because we just have, we're doing the damage repair here. Our beach umbrella, our beach, our, the big umbrella it was broken up. The pole broke into three pieces. I'm trying to figure a way of repairing that with carbon fiber. One thing very cool, which I didn't even realize until we had it, they don't sell the poles. Impossible to buy the pole. Impossible. You can buy the lower pole. You can't buy the part of the pole that always breaks when the umbrella flies into the neighbor's yard. I figured out how to do a nice, a real aircraft quality repair on my expensive, <clears throat> I shouldn't even say it, on my lawn chair. That's fixed. That's on a separate video. But, but this stonework, when I get this done, this will make my life so simple. All summer when we're out riding, I don't have to come home from riding and mow that little piece of thing and do the weeding. It'll be a big upgrade for me. So, And again, thank you, Joe, and we'll see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So people that know me for my whole life know I've renovated and, and done a lot of the, the construction work on 300-year-old houses in my life, taking them from really rough condition. In fact, the first house I bought didn't even have a, a working uh, a heating unit and a winter was coming up. Long story. But anyway, construction work has always been, you know, it's not really a big deal. It's just labor to me. And thank you, John DeTavio, when he worked with me for many years, three or four years, he taught me a lot of tricks of the trade that have served me with George Venturini too. So, where, where this is all going is that has allowed me to do jobs like I'm going to be doing in the next couple of days, I hope. And with Joe's help, it'll probably be pretty easy. But, but the lesson to learn is it's almost like a bike restoration. And I've used this in bike restoration. That's why I'm mentioning it. If you're doing a construction job, half of the job is to get the material from the supplier to on-site. Get the sheetrock there, the tools, the material, whatever you, the, the saws, the table saw get it to the site and get it ready up. Then to do the work is easy. Well, if I get the stone, the stone is gonna be delivered today. God knows when, I gotta sit home all day and wait for it. Once I get the stone here and Joe gets the wheelbarrow here, we can start doing it. The wind is howling 80 miles an hour again. I don't even think it would be a good riding day. But what happened, because the things have blown away, it's damaged things by the pond, all the leaves are now in the pond, it's a mess. So 
where we normally this time of year wouldn't even be out riding or doing anything. It'd be really just not even a riding. We've got an early jump on the riding season, an early jump on a pond cleanup, and I hope by the end of this week I'll have this umbrella fixed, the chair fixed, the stones put in, and be ready to go back out riding. We'll see if that plays out. And normally my channel is usually about motorcycle restoration or riding or working on things. Well, today, today and tomorrow, we'll be doing something just a little bit different. And I'm sure it'll turn into an adventure. Now, the wind is even blowing pretty good today, but fixing the umbrella is going to be, I hope, possible. I've got a big job, but all of the crap is in the pond. This is going to be a good half hour of cleanup. The fish don't care as long as I feed them. So this is our objective for the next couple of days is this grass, Karen wants to turn it into a potting garden where this would all be stone. We have the underlayment to put down and then she'll be able to put these square feet or these square pots in this area. And it's really a good time of year to do this because it really isn't the planting season yet, but it's really, I know, I know you can hear the wind blowing. <laughs> you don't need a wind slayer today. We got some of the material in house already, but certainly not all. And everybody knows every great adventure starts with a strong cup of coffee. And usually when the wind is blowing like this, the birds <laughs> are few and far between. But I don't know where they are this morning. And wind is blowing the birds right out of the bird feeder. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, look at the wind blowing out there. Just to give you an idea of what some of this damage was, this is an 11 foot umbrella. And I think you can even see what a mess. I've got all the rivets replaced. I got this. It's the pole now that's broken. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix the pole. I know the first part of it is you can't buy the pole. So no matter how I work on that in my shop, <laughs> there's just no convenient way to work on this. It is really a pain. You can't even videotape it. There's no room for the tripod. But that part now is ready. It's the pole that's the problem. The pole is in three separate pieces. So just for anybody who has one of these big umbrellas, an 11 foot umbrella has a big heavy pole. It's an inch and a half tubing. Now, it, it's not as simple as what you, what you think is gonna happen is you're gonna be able to call up uh, the place that makes these and buy this whole pole. No, what they always have, they always have the lower pole because I guess this is the one, in fact, this bent here. This is the one that usually takes a beating and so this one, well, I don't care about this. I could buy a piece of pipe to replace this. I can take that bend out and I can reinforce this with some carbon. So that's one thing. And you know what the problem is waiting for these stone delivery people. They may come at 10 minutes after six tonight. I don't know. But anyway, this part now is the part I'm concerned with. This, the, the, uh, the rope goes through here that raises and lowers it. This goes this way, and this goes in here. So I have to figure out if maybe I can just cut that piece off, put that back in there, maybe. Well, I guess we're gonna find out. I have nothing to lose. I'm playing with the house's money here. So I guess the first thing is to make this joint. Let me show this up close. It is damage is easy. I can cover that with carbon fiber. I can take a little bit of that, that out. That pretty similar to fixing the lawn chair that we fixed yesterday. But this piece, now this, to get that joint the way I want it is going to be a very difficult thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it that way. I get, this is the kind of thing you look at. I think the only way I'm going to do is cut this off with a hacksaw and then see if I can push and stall that back in there. See, that's not going to go back in, but then I still have to get the thread. I have to figure out how to get this rope out. Uh, well, anyway, this is going to be challenging. It's going to be more challenging, but I might have all day because I don't know when the stone, Mr. Stone Man is going to do his delivery. And here in fast forward, the little Dremel saw just cut right through that. It's actually thin wall tubing. Okay, so that piece is now... We're just going to dress this edge off and see if we can get that pressed in. It's got to be a press fit, but I've got to be able to get that cord through. i got to get the new cord through. The old cord is ripped apart. I don't want to have any rough edges on this because when you're putting this umbrella up and down, 
And this, this has never been an easy umbrella to get up and down, so I'm not happy. I wish I could come up with a better system of this, but I don't want that to have any sharp edges when I push this in. And this piece, I'm not sure what this does, but I, I don't know. We're going to have to be, we're going to have to be umbrella specialists here. We have to figure it out. And I wonder what holds this in. Maybe it's just the press fit, for all I know. Anyway, that looks like that's in the bank. Like we could, we could live with that. I don't know. We'll find out. Well, luckily, we got plenty of brake parts cleaner here. Now I can tell you why I have to do this, because from this this umbrella again never really opened up and closed as good as it should. I was always putting WD-40. I tried putting chain loop on this. It never really got any better either. I think it was. It's just made. And you know, every time I think something's ten years old, I check the date, and it's thirty years old. So, like me, it's old. Anyway, I'll clean this up. Just make it easier to work on here. Now we got to start the serious work. It's really no different than working on motorcycles. It's try turning out to be trickier than I thought it was because the joint, this joint is at an angle here. I want to put it back to neutral and it looks like when I took a wire to, for trying to thread the, the new cord back through, the cord goes through here, but I'm not sure I understand how it, how it makes that joint. Why it, it would go up through the crank around the pulley and then pulls up or down on the which opens the umbrella but how does it access this that's a good question i guess the cord just goes through there i don't know <laughs> i guess i'm going to figure this out before i'm an old man maybe I, i'm an old man already i didn't figure it out that that's tricky i don't know how that works that's a good question i'm assuming if, if i put a piece of string through here if that string it, of course we don't have the factory manual Yamaha didn't provide the factory manual here, but I would guess that's what that does. Hmm, I don't know. Good question. But anyway, even if we have to leave it the way it is, <laughs> it's still better than nothing. But we got one problem solved and a new one rears its ugly head. So this is why, as we're waiting for Mr. Stone to deliver his stones, I guess you can just push that back. I don't know. Anyway, I do want to have it at least have some idea of what's going on in there because eventually we got to thread that cord through. You, you think something like this would be simple. It's not. Part of my on-the-job umbrella training is I put this in a vise and I'm thinking if if I can pull this, get it back, I want it to be straight. I never use the feature of it moving over so if I just lock it in straight that'll be fine and it, it looks like I've done that but if I can't you know what, if I can't get this the way I want it, I can just put a hose clamp there to hold it. No, that's straight. What am I talking about? High pressure device. Yeah. I'm sure there's some kind of little mechanism in there, but I haven't figured out how, how that string going through there, at the end of it, there must be a knot on the end of it. Turning this wheel doesn't do anything. See, this is why you need the factory manual, the umbrella factory manual. So what I decided to do is, before I put this together for the final time, I will... I will de definitely look out on YouTube and see if there's a... I'm not going to assemble this today. We're just going to get the carbon fiber part of it on if we need to put carbon fiber. But here's the... The dilemma is I don't ever use that tilting feature. So in the worst of all worlds, I can hose clamp that. I don't even need this feature. So, but it's... This is the part you need to buy. And it's... Believe me, I looked on every, every site, every umbrella site on Google. And they were... This part is not available. I even thought of buying a cheaper umbrella and just using a pole. But the cheaper umbrellas are even a lot of money. And the poles they want to sell you out of the lower pole, which this is why they sell it to you, because they always bend and break here in the windstorm, except on an 11 foot umbrella, this is an 11 foot, this takes a, this is, I, I may really have to carbon fiber over this a couple layers. So it looks like we're going to have a carbon fiber job here. Now, the only other thing, this goes to the top of the umbrella. I figured that out already, genius that I am. Okay, we know that can be carbon fiber. Now we got to figure out how to hook. Uh, how does that part go? Okay, we'll take this. Looks like you need a Phillips screwdriver. Take this cover off and see how that gets held in there. What I always find interesting in life is there's always some job that's very intimidating and very uh, difficult and you think it's going to be a real problem and all of a sudden <laughs> you figure some trick way to do it and you're happy as can be. Well, 
Well, the other thing is, I always think in my case, there's something really simple, like fixing a beach umbrella. <laughs> and it turns out to be more challenging than uh, putting a starter clutch in an FCR. Anyway. And by the way, Jason really did use that manual to his advantage. I think he's got the FCR all taken apart already. So I hope that worked out well for him. We're rooting for you, Jason, but maybe Jason knows how to fix beach umbrellas. So whatever we get done today will be free lunch because tomorrow is going to be stone day. We're going to build the pyramids of Egypt. So this is what's in. This is a little ratchet. That's what that looks like. So that when you crank this, it doesn't come back down. And the string obviously is inside there. If you look down in there, there's a little offset pin. And that's how that works. All right, so we're figuring all that out. But what the reason I had to take this off, I have to figure out how to get the new pole or, or the old pole with a piece of it rejuvenated to get that piece to stick on there. So I'm going to try to show you how this works, this ratchet. This is as you're tightening and pulling the umbrella up, it doesn't let that go back. It only goes one way. Then as you turn it backwards, it must have like a, like a starter clutch or something. Let's it go backward, but it doesn't let it go forward. Interesting, but that's... See, this is the kind of stuff, if, if, you, if you had a problem with this mechanism, I don't know what you would do. But this is the part you want to buy. You don't need to, well, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll figure this out. Now this is that part that's really kinked, and before I put carbon fiber over the top of that, I'd like to round it out as much as I can. So before I do any JV welding or anything, I need to get the finish off of that, get the paint, powder coating, whatever it is, and it's... Just a, just a very simple job for the rough wire wheel. This will go uh, five minutes of video down into 10 seconds. Okay, we got that roughened up just enough. Now I was, this is gonna have to be carbon fiber. Maybe I'll bring it back over that. That's the, gonna be the carbon fiber repair part of this. But before I, well, before I do that, I wanted to spend some time figuring out how to get that cord up through and again if the, i don't know if this video is if i'm going to find it on youtube or or not find it and if i don't i'm going to have to improvise a lot of times you have to just figure it out on your own and we will try so what happens this piece snaps into this piece so we're basically done with this piece this piece is ready well, i'm done with that for sure that part is ready for carbon fibering now I just have to figure out how to attach this to this. And that's going to be more challenging. Now maybe I'm going to have to carbon fiber that joint. Or J I'm thinking JB Weld might be the right thing here. But that's like the mechanism that releases it. Now if you didn't, if you, if you carbon fiber over the whole thing, it's going to be almost impossible to get the string back in there. So, so I think what I'll do, I'll clean this up on a wire wheel. I can see the spot where it lines up where it's broken. So that's not a problem. And I'll have to be real careful cleaning it up inside. And I think the first step of this is I'll JB weld this piece to this piece with no carbon fiber and just get a feel for how strong that is. Because in the end, once the string is on and it's working, I can always carbon fiber over it. But I still need to be able to take that pole in and out to get the string in. So this looks like, I'm, I'm guessing, this is going to be the, the best of all worlds here. And I have plenty of JB Weld. Now to make a good joint, I have this rough, I have it clean, and I want to clean in here. Piece of really 60 grit sandpaper here. And I just got the word from the, the stone delivery people that they are in transit, should be here in 20 minutes or half an hour. So we're gonna go get ready to go receive our stone. And boy, that's gonna make tomorrow, that's that whole thing of getting the material in-house. And I then once they leave, I'll finish the carbon fiber work on this. Tomorrow this will be dry, and we'll have to figure out how we're gonna get that string in there. 
a cord or we're gonna have to buy a cord I don't know that that might be a bigger part of the job than I think but in the meantime we got this done okay and always this can dry now while we're out on a porch waiting for our stone delivery but that basically is going to now be a really good joint I think that'll work fine The driver really turned out to be great and it's just was a a painless this is about the most painless delivery i've ever had this was really good now this is pretty funny when i got this from lowe's i asked the manager i said is the guy going to be able to bring this in with the forklift and put it right where i want it and the guy says absolutely not they can only drop it on the street they can't come on your property so this is what a 20 dollar bill will do for you <laughs> And believe me, moving that from the street to here, that's the biggest bargain in the world. Anyway, very, very good service. Very good. Thank you, Lowe's. And tomorrow, Joe and I will hammer away at this. I'm sure we'll get it done in short order. And I have Miles here to help me. Maybe I can get him to do some work. So it really was our lucky day getting that done. I, uh, I can't complain. Boy, that, that went as smooth as glass. Mission accomplished. All right, this is the material we're going to use for this. I'm going to mix up the whole tube of each, so it'll be very easy. And, of course, this is then going to sit 24 hours. And this thing, 50,200 PSI. I'm not sure if that's 50,900 or whatever. But anyway, and we have some the carbon fiber sleeve that we used on, if you look up yesterday's carbon fiber chair repair, we did a real nice chair repair. I think it was aircraft quality, in fact, which most of my stuff is pretty well engineered. And this will be even better, the combination of these two. Now, it isn't like, here's the thing. If you could just go and buy this part, probably it'd be under $100. The lower pole was $35. So, nah, I got to think this is a hundred, yeah, even 100 Well, it may not even pay to do this. But when you can't buy it, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it was great getting that stone delivered. That guy was great. Boy, it's, it's amazing. Everybody, even the guy there said a lot of his drivers are out on that free money. They don't want to go back to work. Well, I wish somebody would send me some free money. So here's a real a good tip, really good tip. You're going to use a flux brush for a job like this and a hair dryer. Put a little bit of blue tape on the end because this is a razor blade. And what happens, once you start working on a job, this cuts through your glove your finger sticks out, you get JB Weld all over the place. It's, it's just cheap insurance. So this is a one-to-one -one mix. I'm going to take these apart, mix them up on a Cheerios box. I'm excited about getting this done. I'm excited about having that stone. And Joe and I will have a, uh, I don't know what day tomorrow. I don't know. I, I hope I have two sombreros. We'll find out. Anyway, but this is just mixing this up. Very, very important that you get it mixed up completely. You don't just mix half of it and then not mix the other half. So we'll see the combination of this and the carbon fiber should make for just a really, really good repair. And keep in mind, it's got to be well mixed. When you mix a big batch like this, it's going to kick off or harden. The, the, the word kick off and harden in the epoxy world mean the same thing. So we've got to get a little bit of a mock Schnell going here, but you do want to have it that it's all gray. You don't want to have big white streaks in the gray. And since we mixed the whole tube, this will go off relatively quickly. So it's always good to keep in mind heat accelerates the cure of any epoxy and almost all paint that I've ever worked with anyway. We want plenty in here. I'm not sure this little detent thing is going to work after this, but I don't really care. I'll figure that out. That's something I could work around, but this is important. I want to get this down inside. I already cleaned this with brake part cleaner, scuffed it with sandpaper. That's a primary thing. You don't want to go over any grease. I've got that piece buttered up. This piece, and boy, when I think about it, what a ripoff it is that they don't sell you these parts. That They want you to just go buy another umbrella. And boy, these things are expensive. This, this an 11-footer, go price it out. Man, I'm we're talking big money here. It's not salami sandwich money. Anyway, 
Always butter both parts if you're going to do a JB Weld thing. Keep in mind that the heat makes it thinner. It penetrates better. So you, what I'm saying is you wouldn't want to do this if possible out where it's 30 degrees. It's probably 40, 45 out there right now. And this is the whole thing is to try to get this. Well, doesn't really Right now it doesn't really matter. We'll get it lined up. I got to get that spring detent out of the way. Next step is to cut a piece of this, leave it a little over, got a little defect in that. I'm going to cut this piece off. That got some epoxy from the other day. We can use that on something else. This, we're going to go about an inch past it. Maybe we'll put two layers on it, so I'll cut two pieces ahead of time. Uh, yeah, let's just, let's think maybe we'll do that. We don't use it, we don't use it. That's okay. This, we're done with this now. Like a lot of jobs that I do, figuring out how to hold a part is always a big part of the job. Okay, now we can rotate it. So the first thing is get on plenty of JB Weld. I want to fill in where that gap is. And it's cold in here now. It's just a little over 60 degrees. I don't have real what we call uh, a desire for this to go off in a big hurry. So if you're in a warm weather climate, this stuff can go off in, in 10, 15 minutes. I want to have work time, so I want plenty of material on there, number one. Put this on, spread it out. We don't need to make this pretty right now. We can always make it pretty later. But to get this first coat on and get it to penetrate into that aluminum, when we're done, keep in mind, this is going to be a lot stronger than the, the aluminum tube. If we were to break it, the stress riser is now going to be right where this ends. Anybody that understands about wing spars and things like that, this when we put this joint in here, this will be strong. This is thin wall tubing, too. I'm surprised they don't make the umbrellas with a little bit thicker tubing, but then, hey, you wouldn't have to buy a new umbrella, so... I don't maybe they're smarter than us. Okay, so we got a lot left over. We got our material uh, We ought to go a little bit further out. I think we got plenty of material So it's not a problem But again, this is all part of the uh, The process of doing this but what it means too is and it's something that's important to me is I Don't have to deal with some company that's going to say yeah, we'll be here at four o'clock. Oh, he's these people that never returned my call, if you know how mad I was, boy, when I was in business and I did have a machine shop, a partnership in it, we would never not return a call. Never. Even if we didn't have, you didn't have any idea of how to do the job, you'd never want to lose a customer. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Anyway, we got plenty of JB Weld on there. But the JB Weld, if you were to just leave it like this, it's going to be strong, but not as strong as with the carbon. So now we got to open up the carbon, and this is always a little bit tricky, because it's like a Chinese necklace. And we got to hope that it's going to go right over that without a problem, which it looks like, I always say it looks like my lucky day. Well, now you never want to pull it from the front, because what happens, then it, it, it necks its way down. We get this part here. And now pull it forward. Now pull it forward. Now you can pull it from the middle out. That's the whole trick of doing this. Now you can work both sides. And of course, always have a box of rubber gloves handy in case this gets too awkward. Okay, looks like we got good, good penetration on that. Now we could work the rest of the material that we have here in this. I know this gets long and, to, and boring to watch, but boy, the day it saves your bacon, wow, it's worth every penny. Now, I'm just thinking, because I'll repaint the pole before I put it back, so I don't really care about it if it doesn't really look pretty right now. So now I have to, and I'm going to clean my hands a little bit. This is just for me, because the next part of it is, I don't want to slime everything up. Using fast forward and a trowel, you just level this off. It's all going to get sanded and painted before we do the install anyway. You now this day ends and it's just going to sit there and dry. And if it, the warmer it is, the quicker it'll dry. But in this case, 
it's a 24 hours before we work on it. Then I can sand that down, paint it with some flat black paint. But you know what's going to happen? The biggest part of this job is going to be getting that, th first off, buying the string. I don't know if we're going to be able to buy it or where we can buy it because it, it broke in that, that uh, blow away. And it probably broke right at a spot where you can't fix it or put a knot in it. I don't know. That's good. And, a, and a lot of times, what I've said before, it's a little inconsequential thing. Here we've done carbon fiber work, made joint repairs, fixed lawn chairs, and it may be that that string is going to be the hardest part of the whole job. I don't know. Now, jobs like this are always unpredictable, always, <laughs> to me, they're always a surprise a minute. I was real happy to get the stone today. I was really happy that Joe's going to come over tomorrow and help me with the stone work. That'll probably be the last day. We'll have three days of uh, sabbatical for motorcycles here, and I'm dying to get back to ride because the weather actually is getting a little bit nicer. It's been in the 40s every day, and some of the days in the 50s, but it doesn't really matter. This has to be done first. I really don't enjoy riding motorcycles when I know i got to come home to this kind of stuff. I'd rather do the work first. Just me. Anyway, I want to thank the healthcare workers, and thank you guys so much for keeping us safe, keeping my family safe. And I can never say enough to thank you. I have my shot. My wife has her shot. One by one, my friends are all getting their second shot. And I hope a month from now, two months from now, we can all be go back to living like we, uh, like we did before. Anyway, and I hope you guys love the video. The reason is, like yesterday, we did the lawn chair. Today, we did this. Tomorrow, we'll do stonework. But we'll get back to motorcycling. It, that's coming. I'm not going to do this forever. But... There's always good information. Now, most of this information that I learned, I learned from model aviation, but it all applies to motorcycling. Good engineering is good engineering. Knowing how to fix things, especially when you can't buy a replacement part. That's, that's pretty important. And I hope some of that comes across on a video, or you just enjoy watching me suffer, one or the other, probably both. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. We do try to post up something every day. Again, thanks for watching. And this, I think, was a really good repair. You know, I think most of the things we show on our video channel are uh, useful information, stuff you can put to, put to use right away. And it's stuff, most of it is stuff I've learned the hard way, not the easy way. So it really is good information. Anyway, and we do enjoy sharing our channel. We enjoy editing the videos. Most of all, we hope you enjoy watching them as much we enjoy making and thanks so much for watching